Hello. So on the previous videos, we have been exploring turbo modules. And one question that keeps popping up in the comments, and I'm getting a little bit tired of answering, and that's also not the best time of, uh, but the best use of my time to answer every comment individually, is um, if I can write Swift for this. The answer is no, you cannot write Swift for uh, JSI code. That's the crux of it. Um, so if you want to find out why, then I'm just going to click around some of the code and show you a little bit of the internals of the JSI and kind of show you why this doesn't work. And hopefully you will gain a better understanding of uh, how this entire thing works. So I'm just going to start with Turbo Secure Storage, which is the Turbo module I wrote for uh, securely storing data. Basically, I don't, we don't really care about the functionality right now. I just want to show you what happens if you try to write some Swift code in here. So I'm just going to go over Xcode and I'm here in the pods target and development pods and here at the Turbo Secure Storage, which is the module that I wrote. So I'm going to create a new Swift file because that's what you guys want to see. I'm just going to call it Turbo Secure Storage. And uh, because I already created this file before, uh, Xcode has already created the bridging header for me. Uh, if you don't have it, then you need to have it in here, right? So inside of this bridging header, I'm just going to import the generated header file from CodeGen, right? Which is in the Turbo Secure Storage uh, package and the header file. So if you're not familiar with Swift, again, um, Swift and Objective-C are two very different things and they're not really compatible with each other, right? Like Apple has gone through the effort of bridging this functionality, but it's not like um, you can easily call Swift code from Objective-C or expose Objective-C headers and, and code to Swift, right? And the bridging header is part of this, all of these mechanisms that Apple has invented to uh, make compatibility between the two of them uh, work. Right, so the bridging header basically exposes headers, Objective-C headers to your Swift code, right? But this is only the header exposition, right? It doesn't mean just because the header is exposed to Swift doesn't mean that you can just call it or you can just use it. Um, between Swift and Objective-C things might work, but if you try to expose other headers, you know, C headers or C++ headers, this might not work in any case. Right, so basically what we're doing here in the bridging header, we're just exposing the headers uh, to the Swift code, all the protocols and implementations, or no, not implementations, but the protocols so that we can later um, use them or import them into the Swift code. Right, so this, this is going in the direction where a lot of people were like, well, why can't I just create a Swift class and uh, implement the protocol? All right, so let's do that, right? Um, so. I'm going to go here into my Turbo Secure, um, Turbo Secure Storage Swift file, and I'm just going to implement the class, right? Which is the same as the one, or in theory, should be the same as the one that we have implemented in Objective C. And I just want to um, implement the protocol, right? Which is basically the same thing that we do on on the Objective C part. We're just telling, you know, whatever this implementation is, you need to have the methods in there so then React Native can call it. Okay, so in the first step, it looks like it works, right? Because we get, uh, does not uh, comply to the ENS object protocol and also does not uh, conform to the native Turbo Secure Storage spec, which is the one we want. So then if we click on fix, it's like magical. It kind of looks like it's working. And sure, there are a bunch of stuff that uh, we need to take care of, which I don't really care about at the moment, right? So I could just very happily start doing uh, writing Swift code and be like, uh, this is set item code, and then I'm going to return, you know, whatever I want to return or that I had to return. And uh, yada, 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 right? So I'm just going to comment some of this out for now. But now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to compile the app and I want to show you what the error says. Right, so here we have our first error and uh, let's just take a look into it, try to understand what it says. It says this file must be compiled at Objective-C++. If you're importing it, blah, blah, blah. 
and you must change your file extension to mm, right? So for starters, React Native already prevents you from doing this, right? Just from a high level, um, the, the header declaration already prevents you pr from importing this in, in a non-C++ uh, environment, right? So this doesn't compile to start with, <laughs> but let's go a little bit more into detail into why, right? So again, the JSI is C++, it's implemented in C++, right? So the JSI communicates between JavaScript and C++. How does it do this? It takes a C++ class, right? Which is the, all this stuff that we have looked into previous videos with just this GSI value thing that can be a string, that can be a number, blah, 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 blah. And internally, it will use um, some of the libraries uh, implemented by Facebook, for example, right? So it, it uses Folly. Folly is, um, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know too much about C++, but Boost, for example, is a library uh, for C++, which has a lot of functionality, right? And I don't know what can I show you. It's just a set of libraries, right? That contains a lot of functionalities, a lot of functions. Think of it, it's a little bit like Lodash, right? So whatever JavaScript doesn't come from, Lodash kind of patches in a functional way. Boost is the same for C++. And Folly is the Facebook version of this. Right, so Facebook has a lot of code, native code, and uh, a lot of utilities, and this is called the Folly, the Facebook open source or library or something like that. So the JSI takes this class and then runs it through Folly functionality, boost functionality, yada, yada. It converts it to a JavaScript value, right? And then it kind of injects it back into the JavaScript context. So then it makes sense, right, that this code needs to be on C++, right? The bindings or the integration between these internal mechanisms has not been written in Swift, has not been written in Java, maybe it never will, <laughs> you know, this is up to the React Native core team. Maybe at some point they might decide, okay, it makes sense to write bindings for Rust, for, for, uh, for Objective-C, for Swift, for Java, for Kotlin, etc., etc. Right? But this is a lot of work because you have to translate data, which is on the native side, with has, which has a binary representation into the JavaScript equivalent and you know, kind of pass this data between the JavaScript and the native side. This is how it works, right? It's not about implementing or um, yeah, implementing the interface on the, on the Swift side and being like, okay, now it should work. It's about translating the data and all the mechanisms that are required to communicate between one representation of the data into the JavaScript representation of the data, right? So the other thing you need to understand is here, when we do Objective-C code or when we do Kotlin code for um, the Java, for the Android versions of these turbo module things, you're not returning Objective-C stuff into JavaScript. Right, Turbo modules is uh, yet another layer on top of the JSI, right? So in the previous videos we did C++ and we accessed the JSI classes directly. Uh, and that kind of makes it look, yeah, like you just pass the data around. But on Turbo modules, what they have done is actually one more layer on top of that. So even though you return, for example, um, well, let me check one one item. So here, for example, this function returns an NS dictionary. It doesn't mean that you are passing an NS dictionary all the way to JavaScript, right? What happens internally is that the Turbo module, like the library itself, is going to take this NS dictionary and it's going to convert it to JSI values and the JSI is going to convert it to JavaScript values, right? So it's a kind of a tiered compilation or a tiered data transfer steps, right? So I am just going to show you, I'm just going to go into this turbo storage uh, definition, right? And this is the code gen generated spec, right? So here you can see, for example, there's some Foley classes, like I said, internally, this uses this Foley library from Facebook. 
um, which is going to convert all this data into some you know somewhat usable um, somewhat usable um, definition so that it can translate it and I'm going to show you for example get the method invocation create promise um, mm -hmm, let's take a look invoke objective C method right so uh, let's just take a look into conversion conversion objects um, so this is one part of the puzzle for example right so again <laughs> it's c++ all the way down right so you call javascript that was going to access the turbo module library, right? And the turbo module library, what's doing, it has created a map of your Objective-C methods internally, right? So Cogen has created this map of, of methods. And then what it does is it has to convert JavaScript data into JSI values into Objective-C equivalent structures. Right, so this is what pretty much is doing here. Um, uh, where is this one set? Conversion selector. Right, so basically it just kind of scans your Objective C code. Right, it finds it finds a matching function for the parameters that you have passed. Then it knows that's the function that, you, uh, that needs to be called, and then it needs to translate all this JSI argument into Objective C argument. Right. And then, you know, the same thing is going to happen when you, whenever you return your data, the same reverse process is going to happen. Your function is going to return an Objective-C object. It's going to go through the internal code from Turbo modules, right? Which is going to take it, it's going to map it, right? So you cannot return any Objective-C uh, values, right? So you return an NS dictionary that's going to be converted into a JavaScript object you return uh, uh, int is going to be current into JavaScript number and so on and so forth, right? So your function returns Objective-C, gets translated into JSI object internally by the turbo module, gets returned into JavaScript. So <laughs> this is the entire kind of way it works. And on, on Android, it's also similar, right? So even though you're writing your, your high level function definition in Kotlin, it doesn't mean that Kotlin is compatible with JavaScript. Right, Turbo Modules has abstracted all this stuff away from you. Right, so you return a writable map that gets mapped into a JSI object. Inside of it, you have numbers, strings, whatever. This is a hard, hard, well, not hard coded, but you know, it's a one-to-one -one mapping that the Turbo Module has implemented. Right, so <laughs> that's why you cannot write Swift. At some point, maybe, right? If at some point um, the, the low-level JSI implementation can convert directly from Java or from Swift code to, you know, the JavaScript context equivalent, sure, then you will be able to write Swift, right? But once again, and to get it across, the JSI is C++, right? Just because you see Kotlin code or Objective-C code at the top doesn't mean that you are interacting between JavaScript and, you know, whatever language you have. Okay, so uh, I hope that clarifies some, some of the questions. Um, as you saw, I'm just kind of clicking around uh, Xcode and here, oh, here's one, convert the JSI function to callback. All right, so you have a is bool, then you get the bool. So this is internally how it works. The code is there. You can just command click around and you should be able to see the source code and you should get a little bit of an idea of how all this stuff is working. Um, so hopefully this answers your questions and hopefully, I mean, I would like to write Swift as well. <laughs> so hopefully in the coming years, this could be a possibility that it works. But in the meantime, you know, we have the Objective-C. All right, take care.